In this video, we're going to talk about facilitated diffusion, which is a type of passive transport that relies on membrane proteins. Now, passive transport is the diffusion of substances via an electrochemical gradient. So we've already spent a lot of time looking at this and talking about this process. Now remember that electrochemical gradients have electrical and chemical components. So if I have, again, I'm going to use sodium, it's like my favorite ion example. If I have three sodium ions over here and one sodium ion over here, there is a concentration gradient. So over here we have high concentration and over here we have low concentration there's also an electrical gradient right because here we have a plus three charge and here we have a plus one charge so that means that this side with the plus three charge is positive or more positive than the side with the plus one charge so we have an electrical gradient where this is the less positive side less positive and here it's more positive so we have a chemical gradient a chemical concentration gradient and we have an electrical gradient due to the charges on the ions so passive transport is simply diffusion due to these electrochemical gradients now facilitated diffusion is when those substances wouldn't readily go across the membrane they need a little help they need some facilitation and the facilitation comes in the form of transport proteins we've already seen the transport proteins before and our two types are channel proteins and carrier proteins. Now, as we've said already, carrier proteins bind a substance and change shape carrying that substance through the membrane, kind of spitting it out on the other side. Now, we haven't really talked about how concentration gradients factor into this. Well, it turns out that carrier proteins carry substances from, their, uh, from the side of high concentration down to the side of low concentration. So they carry substances down their concentration gradient. But some carrier proteins actually kind of trick the concentration gradient. You see, cells are smart and they, they know little tricks to fool physics in order to gain an advantage. So the glucose transporter that's used in red blood cells is an example of one of these tricks. So here we have a glucose molecule and glucose actually has a lower concentration outside of cells than it does inside. So it has a higher concentration inside. All right, so how the heck can these carrier proteins bring the glucose from the side where it's at a lower concentration to the side where it's a higher concentration? Well, that's because as soon as the glucose makes it through to the other side, as soon as the glucose makes it through the other side, it is converted into this molecule, which is called glucose 6-phosphate. So basically, a phosphate group gets added onto our glucose. This fools the cell because, or I'm sorry, fools physics. Our cell is fooling physics because it's saying, hey, actually, in terms of glucose, glucose, this exact molecule there's actually more of that molecule on this side or in the 
extracellular environment, I should say, extracellular environment. Because all the glucose inside the cell is not glucose, really. It's glucose 6-phosphate. So this actually kind of tricks the concentration gradient and makes it think that there's less glucose in the cell than outside. So that's going to keep that glucose coming in down its concentration gradient. All right, let's turn the page.